The pandemic has impacted nearly every part of daily life. Social distancing and recommendations to avoid large gatherings are especially hard hitting for area nonprofits, which are being forced to cancel large scale fundraising events. Everything from galas to silent auctions are no longer on people's social calendars, which is forcing fundraisers to shift gears if they hope to maintain the financial support they so desperately need. That's why Michelle Lavallee, the CEO of Children's Home Society, is here today. Her organization's annual benefit had to quickly adapt to the new normal for all of us. So instead of a traditional fundraising event, Children's Home Society is now hosting its own television event right here on Kelloland TV one week from today. How exciting, welcome Michelle. Thank you so much, Brittany. It is exciting, it's called Caring for the Kids. And you've been in the CEO position for 10 months and then the <laughs> pandemic hit, so you had to transition and become innovative to figure out what you were gonna do. Absolutely, in so many ways. Um, in so many ways we have, but as it applies to the fundraising, our foundation, especially T uh, Tammy and Tom Roberts, came up with this really awesome idea that incorporates so many elements of a good fundraiser, so I can't wait to see it next week. Now, before we get into it, I yep. just want to talk a little bit more about the Children's Home Society to yep. share for people who maybe don't know a whole lot about it, but just tell me a little bit about this organization. You bet. The Children's Home Society is the oldest social services agency in South Dakota. We're 127 years old, if you can believe it, and it was founded as an orphanage. All across the country, there were children's home societies of that state, so we became an orphanage, and then uh, in the 60s, when the government went said that it was better to do um, foster care. We transitioned to that and became inpatient um, and take kids that have um, have been abused or neglected. And if we don't see this firsthand, we might not even know that there is a problem like this in our state. But <sighs> yeah. how much is this needed? You know, we are the only people in South Dakota that take the little ones. So we take from ages 14, or excuse me, from four to 14 for residential care, uh, both here and in the Black Hills. And we have a day school where kids actually come to school year round at our day school program. So um, that provides a tremendous need, but people also don't know that the Children's Home Society also runs the Children's Inn, which is the only domestic violent shelter for women and children in Sioux Falls and Minnehaha and Lincoln County. And then we have Bright Start, which pairs a nurse with a pregnant mom that's at risk for the first three years of the baby's life. So we're involved in that as well as prevention. And I think that we play such a fundamental role in helping kids and families. And part of this is the therapy aspect, which you've also had to get innovative with because how yes. can you do this? How can you bring people in during a pandemic? I know our program directors were just so on the ball. We really, in, by the middle of March, actually the 12th of March, our kids pretty much were in a lockdown situation where they stayed at the residence. And unfortunately then they can't go on home visits and their families couldn't come to us, but we absolutely needed to do that. And we were so successful because our staff was so great in making sure that they were masking and doing all the things they needed to. None of our kiddos have gotten sick and we have been able to make sure that everybody could come to work because that's the problem. If you have in congregate living like that, if somebody does get it and it spreads to the whole unit, everybody has to go on quarantine and that would be such, such a challenge. So now having these kids and giving them a life that they deserve, yeah. what is the ultimate goal having these kids live here? I know that you're looking for yeah. foster parents always. Yep. Sometimes they reunite with their family, but really what yep. is the ultimate goal? You know, the ultimate goal is really about the mission of empowering kids and families to be healthy and have productive lives. So almost always we want the kids to be, it's always best to go back with the family, but if that's not possible, Absolutely, the foster care uh, route is really important and the adoption is really important. We just wanna make sure that kids, when they leave us, and all of our studies show that what they come there for, we're able to improve that by the time they discharge after about 14 months or so. And so we don't really want them, unless they have to, to go into another institutional setting. The institutional setting is, is not great for the long term. And so we're really proud to say that 90% of our kids, when they leave us, go into some kind of a permanent home and 14 months that's actually not that long so that kind of puts into perspective the work that you're doing in that amount of time absolutely and I have to say the other thing that we're talking a lot about and you'll see on the special is our prevention efforts we are actually not just taking care of kids within a residential setting but we're going out to so many different communities and doing presentations about they call it aces adverse child experiences and what happens when things happen to kids when they're little 
to help the families and educate families and employers if they have employees that have had those experiences that there's often things that they have to work through. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing schools and all kinds of different law enforcement. Uh, and I think that's something that people don't think about at Children's Home because prevention means let's take care of things before it happens, before a kiddo has to go into an institution or into a foster home. So that's a big growth area for us is our prevention care. And I'm so excited that the, the special we have coming up really focuses on prevention. No, I want to talk about this special, but part yeah. of this is also fundraising. And why is that so, so important for the Children's Home Society? You know, Brittany, like everything in healthcare, for example, you never really get paid for what it costs you to deliver those services, either from the state or your funders or the city or the county. So if we didn't have outstanding fundraising, we would not be able to do this mission. For example, it really costs us about $120,000 a year to take care of one kiddo in residential, and we get paid about 100. So if you think about that across the spectrum, I think we said we have to raise at least $5,000 a day just for the residential side. But then if you think about our folks over at the, um, the Center for the Violence, Domestic Violence Center, 66% of their budget has to be fundraised. So I mean, thank God our foundation is such, they're so good and so professional and they just, they've known how to go after that. And I have to say, probably out of most social services agencies, we are so proud of our endowment and so proud that that money goes right back to where it's needed. Right. And local as well. Yeah. So let's talk about this special now yeah. because this is incredible. A whole TV special about it. So what is this going to look like? What should I expect to see? Yeah, uh, you'll see a half hour special. It's kind of like the old Jerry Lewis telethon in terms of you watch the show and people are calling in as they hear about all the stories of the kiddos and all the programs that we provide and they're calling in and making donations. And then we have, oh, the Spronks of... Um, Pipestone, they have Pipestone Veterinary, the two brothers, um, Gordon and Randy, have issued a match. So for anything that they raise above $50,000, they will match, um, which is very, very creative. But there's just so many bells and whistles with it. We sold uh, raffle tickets during the summer, and so they'll be at the end of the show. Somebody will draw that raffle for a new Subaru from Schulte. Yes, Shelby Subaru. <laughs> I'm excited to see who gets that because that's really exciting. But we just had the details up. We'll also have those details as well um, oh, on cool. the article on our website so that people can tune in and hear a little bit more. I know there's a lot of great auction items as well. So. Oh, yeah, lots of auction items out there. People have been bidding for the last week or so. Uh, and then there's chances to actually fulfill some kids' wishes, which is a tradition. So you can go in and list what all the wishes are, and you could make a donation towards that. So it seems like there's so many ways to be involved in this. And this is our big fundraiser. So um, every year we've done a big golf tournament in the evening with the kids, and we've raised uh, half a million dollars. So we are hoping that this will do the same. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I can't wait to tune yeah. in. So thank you so much, Michelle, for thank coming you. in today and telling us more about this. Thank you. Be sure to tune in into the Caring for the Kids television event benefiting Children's Home Society right here on Kelloland TV next Monday, August 10th at 6.30 Central Time. You can also call to donate anytime at 605-334-6004 or head online to caringforthekids.com to donate now.